distinguished guest, the President of the United States. Good afternoon, please. Please have a seat. Well, I can, you can tell the Academy grads in the audience, they got bigger grins on their face than others. <laughs> well, welcome. Welcome. We're here today to celebrate a tough team, a storied football program, this year's Commander-in-Chief Trophy winners, the Army Black Knights. I'm impressed with your generosity, General. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor to have so many friends and fans with us here today. They include Secretary of Defense Austin, a proud West Point grad himself. You can clap. <laughs> Secretary of the Army, Christine Warmoth. Christine, where are you? There you are. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who's smiling anyway, C.Q. Brown, Air Force. <laughs> he's an Air Force guy, but he's the best. And I so want not to try to rub this in too much, but I also welcome Representative Stanford Bishop, Stanford Bishop, Representative Bert. Where, where's Brett? Are you here? There you go, Brett Guthrie. Good to see you, Brett. <laughs> Representative Pat Ryan. Pat, how are you, pal? <laughs> I ain't protecting you, man. You're on your own. <laughs> Representative Steve Womack. Yeah. We're also joined by Army's football's biggest fans, Bill and Steve of the radio show Crawdad's Countdown to Kickoff. Well, thanks for making a trip from Alabama. <laughs> and we finally have Coach Jeff Munkin, who uh, once again led the Black, Black Knights back to the White House again. Where are you, Coach? <laughs> and some folks here know over the past few seasons, the coach has restarted the old Army football tradition. Every time the team takes the field, they now carry the gold and black flag with the skull and crossbones. This flag represents everything the Black Knights stand for. Toughness, tenacity, camaraderie, accountability. And you all certainly demonstrated that, Coach. Over the course of this season, you faced setbacks, doubts, and uncertainties. Critics counted you out, but you never gave up. You never quit. Game by game, play by play, you grounded out together. You beat Air Force, who was undefeated until you played them, forcing six turnovers and winning by 20 points. A month later, you beat Navy, second year in a row. Today, you're taking home West Point's 10th Commander-in-Chief trophy. You should be very proud. I want you to know I'm proud of you, too, not just for the wins, but not just for those forced turnovers, although they're impressive, Coach, but because every game after you hang up that uniform, you immediately put on another uniform, one representing the United States of America. Everyone, everyone on the stage stepped up to serve, to lead, to join the long line of American servicemen, each a link in a chain of honor in America. You represent the very best of who we are as Americans. I'm confident that in years to come, you'll be willing to do see, you'll see the same toughness, tenacity, and camaraderie and accountability to our country that you brought to the field in every single game. Now, many of these cadets are going to have to hear me twice, so I'm going to make this shorter than usual. 
because I'm, I'm getting an Ivy honor speaking again at West Point's commencement. So let me uh, close with one brief final thought. Go Army! I occasionally used to root for another club until my son joined the United States Army, spent a year in Iraq, became a major, won the Bronze Star and a few other things. And so I wasn't even allowed to mention any other team ever. <laughs> uh, God bless you all. May God protect our troops. And coach, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished guests. On behalf of our superintendent, Lieutenant General Steve Gillen, our, command, uh, our commandant of cadets, Major General Lori Robinson, our academic, our academic dean, Brigadier General Shane Reeves, our director of athletics, Mr. Mike Buddy, the United States Corps of Cadets, the long gray line of West Point graduates, and the nearly one million men and women who serve our nation as members of the U.S. Army, Army Reserves, and Army National Guard, the Army football team is honored to accept the most coveted trophy in all of college football, the Commander Chiefs Trophy. <laughs> well, grateful. Who the hell's going to carry it home? <laughs> I carried it in here. I'll get. I'll take care of it, sir. <laughs> well, great. We are grateful for your invitation to the White House and for welcoming the members of America's team as your guests here today. This is a team of tough, talented players and a team of gritty, intense fighters. And just as they battled to finish the season with four straight victories, including wins over rivals Air Force and Navy, as you had mentioned, to claim the Service Academy dominance and winning the CIC trophy, these war fighters will lead our nation's sons and daughters to victory on other fields on other days. With us today are 48 soon-to-be commissioned cadets who will, later this month, earn their diploma as graduates of the world's preeminent leadership institution, the United States Military Academy. Soon after, they will enter the profession of arms, prepared to lead and fight our nation's wars. Joining them today on this stage is the rest of our team, underclassmen who in the next few years will join these soon-to-be graduates as officers in the Army. Mr. President, these young men and women embody the values of duty, honor, country, and they represent the best our nation has to offer. We're incredibly proud to be here and grateful to you for this tremendous honor. On, bro, on brave old Army team and beat Navy. Thank you, sir. We got something for you. Sir, I'm going to call. Cadet First Class Jimmy Charlo, who's one of our team captains, Ringwood, New Jersey, to present you with one of our game-worn jerseys from the Army-Navy victory. Thank you, sir. Be Navy. <laughs>